Paul Hoos, a conservative from Quebec, will be speaking to you in French after my uh, opening remarks. Then we'll take questions from everyone in both languages. So I want to start off by saying that uh, this notice of motion came as a real blow, I think, to the hunting, sports shooting, and farming community across Canada. This is another huge hit to the hunting, sports shooting, and farming community. It's another clear blow in that regard. It's uh, very clear that Justin Trudeau, yet again, has learned nothing from the so-called consultations that his cabinet has done over the last few months. And this is another attack on hunting rifles and another, another thing that he's doing to show that he's coming for hunting rifles and he's not going to stop. So I also want to be very clear that this is very clearly a Liberal NDP coalition making this happen. It wouldn't have happened without them working together, which is a real failure to the voters of people like Charlie Angus and rural Liberals as well, like Bruce Henley, Goody, Goody Hutchinson, and Cody Blois, who, as you'll remember, in those first initial months were sort of speaking out against this. And now the Liberals have brought forward the exact same definition for all intents and purposes, but of course have hidden the list from you all and from Canadians to avoid public scrutiny and are instead going to be passing it to their so-called Firearms Advisory Committee. So this has not changed from November. They have not learned a thing. They have not listened to Canada's hunting, farming, and sports shooting community or Canada's Indigenous community. And they're bringing back the same thing that they had in November. And today's motion that we'll be talking about is really a huge blow to the democratic debate that we've been having in committee, the reasonable questions that we've been asking about Bill C-21 and the so-called new definition. And so I think Canadians that are watching this, and we know that this was uh, one of the most enormous hits to the hunting community in a uh, generation in the, over the last couple of months. So the fact that they're trying to force through debate and severely limit our ability to scrutinize Bill C-21, which will impact 2.3 million gun owners, their families, their grandchildren, hundreds of millions of dollars of our economy, and tens of thousands of jobs, the fact that they're severely limiting debate in that regard and forcing this through, I think is deeply, deeply concerning, certainly to the democratic process and all the people that I just outlined that will be deeply impacted by this. Again, Justin Trudeau has been very clear that he wants to come for hunting rifles. He has said as much as well. And I'll just remind you of what he said. He said, our focus now is that we're going to have to take away from people who are using them to hunt. And he was referring to guns. So we know what his intentions are and Canadians shouldn't be fooled, this is a large attack on hunting rifles, the largest in a generation. And what's really frustrating, I think, to Canadians that care about firearms violence, want to see gun violence end, is this won't do one single thing to eliminate illegal guns from our communities. This will not do anything to stop the multiple stabbings and murders on public transit. This won't do anything for the young boys that have been murdered on public transit by stabbing in Toronto, in Alberta, in BC. There's been assaults as well. We're seeing this every single day. And while Canadians are genuinely concerned about public safety, the Liberals continue to focus their efforts and our taxpayer dollars on coming after uh, law-abiding citizens who are trained and vetted and tested by police and the firearms that they own, who are not a threat to Canadians. This is a centuries-old heritage and part of Canada, as you well know. We've had this discussion, and here we are, round two, having it again. So it's deeply concerning in that regard, and I'll remind you that the Liberals are spending tens of millions of dollars that they've announced just in the last few weeks on phase one of their so-called buyback or their confiscation regime that will not remove one single illegal firearm from the gangsters, and criminals that are shooting up the streets of Toronto, and the about 9 out of 10 guns that are being smuggled across the border to be used in those crimes to hurt innocent Canadians. And that's to say nothing of the billions of dollars that will be costing to taxpayers of the individual confiscation regime of firearms that is sure to come. You'll notice in the budget, just to conclude, there was not one mention of bail reform, despite every single premier in the country demanding bail reform, every municipal police force demanding bail reform, every single big city mayor in, in Ontario demanding bail reform. Not one mention in the budget of that, not one mention of fighting violent crime in the entire federal budget, but there are about $30 million for a confiscation regime IT program to, to start their confiscation regime of individual private property. So that's what we're seeing is the priorities of this government. This is another blow to the democratic process of C-21, and we're going to do everything we can to stop it. Merci, Raquel. Bonjour, tout le monde. Écoutez, ce matin, ce qu'on voit, la vie de motion qui est déposée par le gouvernement, c'est clairement une attaque contre les chasseurs au Canada, un sport qui est pratiqué depuis des centaines d'années 
par tous les Canadiens à travers le pays, surtout dans les régions rurales. Euh, on ne comprend pas pourquoi le NPD, surtout le Bloc québécois, appuie massivement les efforts du gouvernement et de Justin Trudeau pour bannir les armes de chasse. Euh, alors qu'on voit, depuis 15 ans, vous le savez tout le monde, depuis 15 ans, depuis 2015, il y a une augmentation de 32 de la violence au Canada, dans les rues de Montréal, Toronto, les crimes qui sont perpétrés par des, des gangs avec des armes illégales, c'est là que l'effort doit être mis. Et au contraire, ce qu'on a vu depuis huit depuis ans maintenant, c'est la loi C-75, la loi C-5, des lois qui ont été mises en place par les libéraux qui font le contraire d'assurer la sécurité publique. Moi, je Très partisan, je suis très partisan de la sécurité publique, d'un maintien de l'ordre au Canada. Et lorsqu'on voit avec C-21 et surtout l'avis de motion qui est déposé, c'est d'empêcher le comité de la sécurité publique de faire son travail adéquatement, d'aller au fond des choses. Quand, ce qu'on voit, ce n'est pas compliqué. En novembre dernier, lorsque les amendements ont été déposés, qu'il y avait les listes claires des armes qui devaient être bannies, on a eu une réaction très forte de la communauté des chasseurs, avec raison. Ce qu'on a fait, on a retiré ça, on arrive avec un, une nouvelle façon de dire les choses. Et là, on dit, bon, on ne on fait pas de consultation davantage, on arrête tout, on doit voter rapidement, c'est fini. Le comité décidera. Mais on sait très bien que le comité, par la suite, va arriver, va reprendre les mêmes armes, il va les remettre dans cette liste-là, il va faire en sorte que, finalement, les chasseurs, ça va revenir au même point qui est arrivé en novembre. Puis quand Carey Price a fait sa fameuse sortie, bon, on va revenir au même point, on va avoir les armes des chasseurs qui vont être bannies. Avez-vous vu beaucoup de chasseurs commettre des crimes au Canada dans les dernières années? Moi, je n'en connais pas. Les chasseurs vont à la chasse, font un sport qui, 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 qui est pratiqué par des millions de Canadiens, alors que dans les rues, on a des problèmes. Oui, ce matin, le gouvernement est arrivé, on a annoncé 300 millions pour renforcer la sécurité aux frontières. Parfait, on est pour ça. Mais pourquoi pas en faire plus? pour renforcer nos frontières avec l'argent qu'on va servir, les milliards que ça va servir à racheter des armes à donner aux citoyens. C'est ça qui est notre incompréhension totale. Mais surtout qu'aujourd'hui, c'est quoi qui presse tant que ça de finir avec ces 21 pour arriver à faire passer là, dans la gorge des parlementaires euh, un amendement qui finalement va s'attaquer aux chasseurs, aux honnêtes citoyens. On ne le comprend pas et on le dénonce fortement. Merci. Quand, quand on regarde le 390 millions de dollars annoncés ce matin, là, vous venez de dire que c'est une bonne chose, vous êtes content avec ça? On le demande depuis toujours, de renforcer le, la sécurité aux frontières. Les libéraux nous ont dit, j'étais porte-parole en sécurité publique, les libéraux ont dit, vous avez coupé les conservateurs à l'époque. Bien oui, on a coupé parce qu'il y avait moins de problèmes aux frontières, il y avait des coupures administratives, mais les coupures opérationnelles n'ont pas été faites par nous. D'aujourd'hui, de réinvestir, d'avoir de plus grands moyens pour contrôler les accès aux frontières pour le, le trafic d'armes, c'est sûr qu'on est pour ça. Et ce qu'on dit, prenons plus d'argent pour en faire encore plus, mais prenons pas l'argent qui est prévu actuellement par le gouvernement pour racheter des armes à donner des citoyens qui ne font rien de mal. Il faut vraiment s'attaquer aux trafiquants. Ils essaient de détourner l'attention? C'est sûr et certain que l'annonce de ce matin, c'est une tentative de détourner l'attention pour que vous parliez de ça. Puis pendant ce temps-là, ils, ils font leur motion en coulisses, organisent qu'on en finisse avec le débat sur ces 21. C'est ce qui se passe actuellement et c'est vraiment, vraiment une insulte, surtout pour les chasseurs. Là. Les gens qui font de la chasse, ils ne comprennent pas ce qui se passe. Les gens ils disent « Pourquoi on s'attaque à nous? On ne fait rien de mal? » Regardons donc les frontières et vraiment les rues de Montréal et Toronto, c'est là que ça se passe. Puis il faut en mettre plus, mais lâchons les honnêtes citoyens. Mr. Ontario, il y a une motion qui est dans le Conseil maintenant. Donc le passage de cette motion est nécessaire pour le comité de considérer les amendements du gouvernement, est-ce que c'est correct? Non, ce n'est pas correct. Donc maintenant, le comité est en train de passer la loi C-21. And there's about uh, the Liberals and other parties, well, of course, it's our right to bring forward amendments. We're about halfway through those amendments. We got through half of them in about a week, which is actually, I believe, record time considering uh, this bill and the magnitude of it. Uh, so there's no reason of why they would need to use this motion other than to expand the scope of the bill and to uh, destroy the ability for us to debate. The programming motion would limit our ability to debate to about five minutes per clause, which it really, if you, many of you watch committee, that's about two questions per clause. And again, this impacts, as I mentioned, millions of people and hundreds of millions of dollars of the economy and countless jobs. So the idea that it would limit debate so severely is very concerning. It also expands the scope of the bill. And you've, you've heard this in the last four months that this uh, hunting rifle ban that they're trying to bring in to C-21 is outside the scope of the bill. And we uh, attempted yet again to bring that forward to a vote in committee last week, and it was voted down by the other parties. So now they're forcing uh, the bill to be expanded almost retroactively, So they, which really tells me they know that what they're doing is outside the scope of the bill. But now they're just forcing it through the House so that it can't be uh, 
so that this portion of the bill, which is outside the scope, that's what we believe, and the NDP used to believe that as well, Alad, um, they're forcing it this way, if that makes sense. I hope I'm explaining that How correctly. How long do you expect this debate to, to go on in this motion before it comes to a vote? Uh, well, again, I will say that we were working, you can check the record yourself last week, we were working quite well with the other parties, despite how contentious this bill is last week. That was a good faith effort. This is a slap in the face, and now the Liberals and NDP are pairing up to go nuclear. And so for us, we feel that uh, an equivalent response to being treated that way would be, would be welcome from us. So what I need from you, a lot of us here are filing on guns and gangs announcement in Peel Region this morning. Mm -hmm. Ontario's Deputy Premier was there. The Peel Region Chief was there. He said it was a good thing. We need a clip from you not about what's happening in Parliament, but whether you like the government's guns and gangs funding announcement this morning, please. This is the one about a couple million dollars that he announced regarding transit. That is a drop in the bucket. That will not impact the safety of Canadians in transit across the country. Every single city in the country is, is experiencing severe violence on public transit to their children, to people who are just going to school, to work. The idea that that measly funding announcement is going to make any impact whatsoever on safety in public public transit is laughable. If they really cared about public transit safety and fighting violent crime and bail reform, they would have mentioned that in the budget where it was not mentioned one time. In, in Crenshaw, your colleague suggested that maybe the, the timing of that announcement uh, was a bit interesting given this motion today. Said, I'm just yeah. wondering if you have any thoughts on that. And this is a government who spent more money than any government in history. If they cared about public safety, they would put money behind it. So it is, I, I was frustrated by that. I felt that that was trying to be a distraction from them circumventing democracy today in the House of Commons, and we're going to fight it every step of the way. I just have two questions. One about the last time, as you referenced, the NDP had been on the precipice of asking the Speaker to rule these amendments out of order mm -hmm. with the bill. Is that something that you're thinking about going right to the Speaker and saying these amendments are too big? to be in, change the bill too materially that this isn't okay. So two things on that. First, I think this, this my understanding is this time allocation bill and the motion they put forward would, would stop us from having that ability in Parliament to have the Speaker rule that's out of scope. So that tells me that the Liberals know that we are right, we have been right, that this is out of scope of the bill. Going after hunting rifles is not within the scope of C-21. And I'll remind the NDP that we brought forward that option right off the bat as soon as these massive hunting rifle ban amendments were brought forward in November. We pushed for a vote on committee to rule this out of scope. They voted against it. They could have stopped this with us right at the beginning and they failed to do so. So the NDP is not being transparent or honest with their voters and I find it very disappointing, particularly for rural and northern NDP MPs, that they're really being stabbed in the back by the NDP right now. It's very disappointing. And the Bloc as well, which is mostly a rural Quebec, who I believe have some of the most, the highest numbers of firearm ownership in the country. Just my second question, just my second question about your assessment of, of Marco Mendicino right now and how he's handling the allegations around Michael Chong and the extent to which our security agencies knew, didn't know, who they told, who they didn't tell. I'd like to hear your thoughts on that, on, on what the government ought to be coming clear on now. I think the Liberal government and the Minister of Public Safety and the Prime Minister's number one job is to ensure that Canadians are safe from abuse from foreign governments. That's a given, or at least it, it should have been and should be. It appears that, that is not the case under the Trudeau Liberals, deeply disappointing and concerning for all Canadians that they can't seem to stand up for the safety of a member of parliament, let alone diaspora communities in Canada. So I think that I would give the Minister of Public Safety a giant fail on this. And you saw last week that he wasn't being transparent at all with what he knew and when he knew. And what exactly has he done about it? What one thing could he point to since he found out that he's done about it to keep Canadians safe from foreign interference and abuse of our members of parliament and Canadians? Nothing. He's said nothing about it. I think it's deeply disappointing and he needs to get off his butt and get to work and keep Canadians safe from foreign interference. Thank you, Paul. Oui, ça, par rapport à l'initiative du oui. siècle, donc le dossier euh, dans le journal ce matin, euh, c'est pas un sujet qui est beaucoup débattu à Ottawa. Euh, donc, 100 millions d'habitants d'ici 2100. Premièrement, je veux dire, le Parti conservateur, on n'entend pas souvent parler de ça. Euh, Qu'est-ce que vous en pensez globalement et surtout du fait qu'à Québec, il n'y a aucun parti qui veut euh, avoir autant de, nouvel, de nouveaux arrivants et que ça va avoir un impact sur 
le poids du Québec. Donc, Absolument. juste votre analyse de la chose et la position de votre parti là-dessus. Ben, premièrement, pour être clair, c'est que l'initiative n'est pas une initiative gouvernementale officielle. Ce qu'on a eu comme plan, c'est un plan pour les prochaines cibles d'immigration à partir de 2025 qui irait à 500 000 par année. Nous, ce qui est clair, premièrement, c'est commençons par régler ce qui se passe actuellement. On a entre 1 et 2 millions de dossiers d'immigrants qui sont en arriérage au Canada. Euh, chaque semaine, dans nos bureaux de circonscription, il y a des, des nouveaux immigrants qui attendent, qui nous appellent, qui ont des problèmes. Fait que ça, premièrement, le respect, le manque de respect du gouvernement actuel envers les immigrants, ceux qui sont déjà là, c'est une première des choses. Deuxièmement, j'ai déjà mentionné également, lorsque le ministre a annoncé à l'automne euh, l'initiative de monter les seuils d'immigration, c'est qu'il fallait aussi avoir une collaboration des provinces. On doit respecter les capacités d'accueil des provinces. Le, on a actuellement un problème de logement au Canada, c'est criant pour la population qui est déjà en place. Comment on peut se permettre d'accueillir, de bien accueillir des nouveaux, euh, des nouveaux citoyens si on n'est même pas capable de s'occuper d'eux de façon adéquate? Et c'est un, un des points qui est soulevé généralement par le gouvernement du Québec, avec raison. Donc, pour ça, nous, on n'a jamais eu d'explication. On a soulevé ces points-là. C'est quoi, de quelle façon vous voulez vraiment mettre en place un plan euh, d'immigration qui a davantage de citoyens qui s'en viennent, alors qu'on ne peut même pas régler ce qui se passe actuellement et qu'on ne prend même pas en considération les capacités d'accueil. Au niveau de l'expulsion de diplomates, là, on nous a promis qu'on était pour y penser. Là, le couronnement, c'est fini. M. Trudeau est revenu, Mme Joly, puis ils ont fini le, le, le congrès libéral. Vous attendez à avoir une annonce sur une expulsion au nom de diplomate quand et pourquoi? Ça aurait dû être fait déjà la, la semaine dernière. À partir du moment où c'est clair qu'il y a eu une ingérence, que des actions comme ça sont confirmées de la part de nos agences de sécurité, que le gouvernement est, est au fait, euh, c'est immédiat. Les actions ont été demandées. Notre parti a été clair en chambre. On a demandé que l'agent qui travaille au euh, consulat chinois à Toronto soit expulsé du Canada. Le gouvernement a tous les outils pour le faire. Donc, c'est une décision qui revient strictement au gouvernement Trudeau. Et c'est à eux de le faire. Et nous, on s'attend que ça se fasse. Malgré les conséquences. Malgré les conséquences que ça peut avoir. Non, non, mais sérieusement, là, parce que les conséquences... La sécurité des Canadiens, la première chose, c'est la première responsabilité du premier ministre. La sécurité des parlementaires, en plus, qui a été mise en cause là-dessus, il n'y a aucune négociation. On doit prendre les actions qu'il se doit. Merci.